Hello and welcome. In this video will cover a point to point over Ethernet protocol. So uh, basically the uh, point to point over Ethernet uses a point to point protocol. So there are two protocols that we can use in um, uh, in connecting okay when connecting two devices. So uh, as you can see, Let's say we have um, one router here, okay? Let's say R1 here, and then we have another router right here, R2. So normally, point-to-point -point protocol works over serial links, okay? There is also another protocol called HDLC, right? HDLC. And we have also a Cisco proprietary HDLC. So uh, why point-to-point uh, -point protocol over HDLC? Because actually point-to-point -point protocol provides uh, authentication, encryption, and compression. That's why we use it, right? So uh, let's go actually uh, to next slide and. Uh, as you can see here, point-to-point -point protocol is a data link protocol. So it operates in the layer 2 of the OSA model, which means everything related to the MAC address, okay, and uh, so on. So point-to-point -point connection, as I mentioned, uh, actually it's allowed two end devices like routers to establish a direct connection between them on a serial links. Uh, link control protocol, it uses LACP or LCP, sorry, LCP, link control protocol to uh, negotiate and establish the uh, connection. And it provides, okay, it provides actually authentication, okay, encryption and compression. That's why it's more preferred over uh, the HDLC protocol that we mentioned in here. Uh, authentication, there are two protocols that it uses or it supports. It supports the Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol CHAP, okay, which is basically a three-way uh, handshake, right? And also the point-to-point uh, -point protocol PAP, which is uh, as traditional username and password. That's not uh, part of our discussion. Uh, our focus is the point-to-point uh, -point over Ethernet protocol. So uh, as you can see, the difference between point-to-point -point and the point-to-point -point over Ethernet is that the point-to-point -point protocol actually it's uh, configured on uh, serial links. But point-to-point -point protocol, what it does, it uses the uh, point-to-point -point protocol, okay, and encapsulate the point-to-point uh, -point frames, point-to-point -point protocol frames into an Ethernet media or on to uh, Ethernet media. So point-to-point -point protocol is used in the digital subscriber line, okay, DSL, okay, uh, by the ISP to provide uh, clients or customers with access to the Internet. And normally the customers, let's say this actually, this is the ISP. Let's move back to the uh, topology. Uh, let's say uh, we have an ISP here, right? So uh, the ISP would normally actually uh, provide a default, okay? Will give actually a default route, okay? To the those customers right here, okay? So they access the internet. So uh, since we understand the difference between point to point and what is point to point, let's check how it works and what are the messages that point to point protocol uh, uses. So as you can see here, uh, a point to point uh, protocol or point to point over ethernet protocol it have two actually stages or two phases. There is actually the discovery stage or phase. In the discovery phase, the client actually send an initiation, okay, initiate a, a connection to establish point-to-point -point, 
uh, over Ethernet session with the access concentrator or basically uh, which is uh, normally a uh, router okay at the ISP end so I can see some blink in uh, in here so I'm gonna okay uh, so uh, and they are actually establishing this session using the MAC addresses so there is remote MAC address of the access concentrator and also the local MAC address of the uh, client in point-to-point -point discovery uh, stage it consists of the following steps so the first step it's the initiation okay initiation initiation okay initiation so uh, the client actually sends a, a active discovery initiation okay PADI to the server and after that the server actually will respond with uh, an offer okay the active discovery offer as you can see right here so uh, this is the initiation and here we have the offer from the server or the access concentrator and then after that the uh, there is an active directory uh, active uh, discovery active directory actually yeah I'm teaching active directory in school so yeah uh, so uh, there is an active discovery request by the client because the client can actually get more than one uh, offer from multiple uh, actually servers but not on the same interface so okay not on the same interface and then we have the request so the client will request actually request uh, to establish a session with the uh, server and the, uh, and the last actually uh, packet will be sent by the server which is the uh, session confirmation as you can see right here okay and this is the after this packet this is the end of the discovery stage okay so uh, when they discover each other they start they move to the uh, next phase which is which is the session stage okay and this uh, stage actually the client and the access concentrator build uh, a point-to-point -point connection over Ethernet okay and actually uh, based on the information that they have exchanged so uh, normally uh, since point-to-point uh, -point over Ethernet protocol is a data link protocol so they use MAC addresses okay to establish a session uh, at any point of time uh, one either the client or the server they can send okay uh, point to point over ethernet active discovery termination okay if actually they don't uh, if something is wrong or okay so you could send uh, the packet to terminate the session so uh, I will move back to the uh, to this slide here I mean the uh, okay slider first page so as you can see here we have an ISP router and then we have uh, a couple of branch okay uh, routers for a customer and each branch is actually uh, there is a subnet behind it slash 24 subnet that actually need to be probably accessible from the headquarter that is located behind the ISP okay that's not uh, our discussion at least for now uh, so let's uh, go to the command line and we will configure point to point over Ethernet protocol so uh, first I'm gonna go to the ISP ISP router so I need to be in global configuration mode okay and after that the first thing that we need to do okay configuring point to point uh, over Ethernet protocol is we need okay we need to create okay a, a username and uh, passwords right password okay for all those uh, branch routers right there let's go ahead and do that so username br1 
Okay, and password, let's say Cisco, which is um, the most difficult password, right? <laughs> okay, and then uh, for the branch to router, let's use BR2 and the password, okay, Cisco. I mean Cisco. And then uh, branch 3. So branch 3, the host name will be br3 and the password. So that's the first step. The second step is actually to create a pool, okay, of addresses, right? Pool of addresses that will be um, assigned. It's difficult to talk and type at the same time to each okay uh, client. Okay, so uh, the command is IP local pool. Okay, and the name. Okay, the name of the pool. Let's say this is for branch one right there. And then uh, what is the pool? Is the uh, okay 192.0.2. Six right there because I'm configuring this interface right here. Okay, uh, this interface right here, this guy here. Okay, uh, let's delete this gibberish. Gonna delete this thing. Yes, here we go. Okay, so I'm configuring this one with uh, 192.0.2/5 slash Terry as you can see right here so the other end will have dot six as uh, we configured in the pool right here <coughs> to show IP interface brief okay so uh, I need to configure this IP address later on so okay and then IP local pool local pool br2 and then uh, the IP address, as you can see, it's right here, dot 10 IP address, okay? So the 0 0.2.10. Dot, uh, and finally, the pool for R3 will be, or for branch router 3, will be dot 14, okay? So uh, this is the second step. Uh, the third step that we need to do is we need to create okay a virtual uh, template okay virtual template interface right and uh, associate associate okay associate the associate it with okay the um, IP address of of the physical interface it could be physical interface or sub interface sub interface right there okay so uh, instead here as you as I can see here as you can see so uh, instead of using different interfaces we could use only one interface okay and connect all the routers okay via one interface so here will be a probably let's say uh, let's delete this thing here i'm gonna actually uh let's say we have a switch in here okay and then we can uh, connect all those devices okay via a switch in this case we will configure a switch okay we we'll configure a router on a stick topology this will be a trunk interface right here and here we will have sub interfaces okay and then we'll configure them with dot one q right there okay and then we could use sub interfaces to establish the uh, point to point over ethernet connection so what i was talking about so uh, we said that we need to create virtual uh, interface virtual template interface associated with physical uh, address and also okay uh, we will also associate the virtual template with a pool of addresses associate okay associate it with um, pool okay of addresses that we created earlier 
as well as we need to configure okay authentication so in this case we're going to use authentication -cation. it's hard to uh, talk and type at the same time in our case we're going to use uh, chap okay chap protocol challenge handshake authentication let's do that so first interface uh, virtual template let's say one and after that I'm gonna actually associate it with the interface with the command IP n numbered okay gigabit zero slash zero in this case we wanna assign it to the uh, gigabit zero zero which is this interface right here okay after that we can set up the MTU maximum transmission unit to let's say 1492 less than the default and after that we need as I mentioned earlier we need to associate it with the local pool with the command peer default IP address pool and then the pool which is uh, BR1 that we created earlier and then uh, authentication so point to point authentication chap right there so what we are saying here point to point authentication chap okay so what I'm saying right there I'm saying that okay I want to authenticate those okay branch routers so when this one starts initiate the se uh, the uh, the session point to point over Ethernet session it needs to actually okay tell me what's the host name and the password okay host name and okay the password so uh, I think that's it for the uh, virtual interface let's do show run interface interface virtual okay uh, virtual template one no not virtual access this is virtual uh, template one and as you can see uh, we associate virtual interface or virtual template interface to the gigabit zero zero interface and then we set up the MTU maximum transmission unit this is not necessary it's not optional and we associate it with the uh, the pool that we created earlier and then we um, of course the ISP we need to uh, as an ISP we need to establish authentication okay so uh, that's it after that I need to exit and step number so with the three steps right step number four what we need to do um, we are gonna actually uh, so we set up just one virtual interface uh, so since this is template based we can actually copy this and paste and let's actually uh, copy change the interface here and I'm going to copy again the virtual virtual template uh, number two right there here we go and we associate it as you can see with one zero gigabit one zero okay right here and br2 i didn't actually create the br2 so let's exit ip let's check the yeah i already did i think do show run let's say include ip local here we go yeah so we create them uh, all and then uh, i'm gonna actually uh, modify the virtual template interface number three okay here we go and we're going to associate it with this interface which is the uh, gigabit uh, gigabit two zero okay gigabit two zero right there and here we go i'm going to copy and paste right there paste here we go exit you show ip interface brief so as you can see we have uh, virtual templates three virtual templates right there okay so uh, after that what we need to do we need to create a profile or broadband profile okay in step number 
four, right? So create uh, a point to point PPP over Ethernet, okay? BBA group, it's called BBA group. It's just simply a profile that we need to use. Okay, profile. And we're gonna assign it to, and assign it, okay? Assign it to, okay? To the virtual, I mean virtual, uh, virtual, okay? Templates, template that we created earlier right there okay so to do that uh, the command is bbi group okay bbi group for point to point and i'm going to name it br1 and then i'm going to associate it with uh, virtual template number one as you can see we uh, the router created a virtual uh, interface for that okay i'm going to exit and then i'm going to actually BBI group or profile for uh, branch two, associate it with virtual template two, exit, and then um, up a row, virtual template, uh, I mean, uh, okay, uh, number three, this is profile number three, and then associate it with virtual template three. You shall run. Let's make sure everything looks fine. Okay. Uh, step number five, which is the last step, uh, what we're going to do. So, you show IP interface brief. We're going to assign the interface's IP addresses. Okay. Those IP addresses. And also, we are going to associate those physical interfaces with the uh, BBI group that we created. Uh, right here okay so yeah and there are interfaces let's do that so uh, interface gig okay zero slash zero I'm gonna give it an IP address 192.0.2.9 as you can see right there mask of slash 32 no shutdown and I'm gonna say point to point over Ethernet enable then group okay br one for this okay for the group one that we created earlier interface gig one slash zero and then i'm gonna okay this is um oh sorry this is slash nine right it will overlap so for the gig gig zero zero we are using the wrong IP address. So IP address will be dot five in here, right? Okay, and then the IP address for the gigabit one zero will be dot nine right there. There we go. Then interface gig um, two slash zero, and then IP address will be 13 right there. So no shut. I forgot to. <coughs> sorry. I'm sorry. So you show IP interface brief, as you can see. So all interfaces are up right there. Configured with interface with uh, IP addresses. Uh, do show run. I forgot to show run interface gig one slash zero. I need to associate it with okay one slash zero. So uh, point to point over Ethernet. Okay, enable group and br two for this interface. And let's go to the uh, two slash zero interface and then um, point to point over Ethernet enable group, okay, BR3 right there, okay? To show IP interface brief. So uh, I think do show, let's say do show run to make sure everything is working fine let's scan over the configuration so as you can see 
Step number one, we create the username and password. Step number two, we created the uh, virtual templates, right? Virtual templates interfaces, uh, which are right here. We set up the authentication and also, okay. Uh, we create local pools right there, as you can see. And then in the top here, we created the uh, profiles, BBI or broadband profiles. Okay, and then under the interfaces gig 00, we uh, actually enable the point to point group and the name of the profile. At this point, I think we are good to go. So let's uh, go to the uh, branch one router. Let's go to the branch one router and do show IP interface brief. So as you can see, I have configured the LAN behind the uh, branch router interface, and that's it. So, so uh, on the client interface on the, or on the client uh, to establish point-to-point -point, uh, over Ethernet session, what we need to do on the client, first we need to go to the physical interface. So let's go to uh, interface gig. Okay, this is gig one slash zero interface, which is this interface right here. Okay, and then uh, I'm gonna actually no IP address. We don't want to assign it a static IP address, but rather the other virtual interface that we'll create later will get an automatic IP address from the server that we create from the pools that we created on the server earlier, right? So uh, I'm gonna say point to point enable group, okay? Let's say BR1. Okay, and then point to point, okay, client command, and then dial up pool number, which is pool number one that we are gonna create later, okay? So I think uh, that's it. Uh, interface dialer one, we need to create a dialer interface as we did, we create virtual templates on this server, and then here we are gonna create a dialer interface on the client, okay? So dialer interface IP address negotiated. We'll get it from the pool that we created on the server. And then uh, actually the encapsulation should be set to point to point. We're going to use point to point protocol. Dialer pool one. And then specify the uh, authentication point to point chap host name that we use on the server br1 and then uh, actually the password and the password was the most difficult password in the world which is Cisco here we go and uh, at this point uh, I think everything is good so to show run there we go so uh, I'm going to look for this interface gig uh, one zero right here. So we associate the physical interface with the uh, dialer pool number that we created. And also we associate it with the profile BR1 right there. Okay. So uh, and then uh, down here, as you can see, uh, the dialer uh, interface we actually set the IP address to be negotiated to get it from the server encapsulation point to point and then dialer pool one and then we set up the authentication host name and password that will be sent to the server so at this point I can actually turn some debugging on so let's do, de do debug okay debug point to point authentication 
and then we want to debug also point to point over ethernet events those are the most important actually debug commands that you can use okay to watch some interesting traffic and if there's some problem you will see that right there now i'm going to go to the gigabit one zero interface i'm going to say no shut down and at this point we should see some interesting stuff coming in okay in the output right there okay i'm waiting i'm still waiting let's give it a couple of seconds So as we mentioned earlier, okay, we uh, talked about the uh, we talked about the client actually start the uh, send the uh, active discovery initiation right there, and then the server will respond with uh, the active discovery offer, okay, as you can see right here. So uh, here is the uh, okay active discovery initiation sent on the interface one zero okay from the client, and then we get a an offer right here from the server, and as you can see, this is the remote MAC address. Sorry, remote MAC address of the ISP router, and this is the local our MAC address right here. So, uh, and after that, uh, we get the, uh, we get the uh, active, uh, active, uh, active discovery, uh, actually, uh, request, okay, we have got our offer, so we are sending the request, okay, and then after that, we get the uh, active discovery, okay, active discovery, so, uh, we send the request here, right? So uh, request R here, and then after that we get the the final actually uh, message in the active discovery phase, which is the okay session confirmation. So they confirm the session at this point. Actually, they uh, establish okay. They discover each other. MAC addresses and here the next phase with which we uh, talked about the session phase okay to establish a session and also to do some authentication so they need to authenticate each other and let's go to actually the authentication where is in chap okay and okay so everything looks good so you show IP IP interface brief at this point and here we go so I yeah I, this is uh, amazing I mean yeah it's uh, it's cool so we get an IP address okay from the uh, the server so at this point we could actually uh, do show okay PPP over Ethernet okay session Okay, here we go and as you can see here we established a session successfully and the point to point over ethernet is functional and running okay so here we have the remote uh, mac address and the local mac address and we have the dialer interface one and the state is up and for the uh, virtual access which is the interface that was created for us okay state is up as well i don't know actually although i will actually make the window bigger here right it's still uh, the same this is some bug okay cisco need to uh, to fix this problem so we could see some uh, good output okay uh, in here right so the states should be saying up and up and interfaces right here i think it looks a little bit you know not uh, human readable right so uh, I'm gonna go back. Okay, so let's go to uh, branch router two. And since uh, we're configuring point to point over Ethernet, this is basically show run. 
do show run uh, we could copy paste so it's template based so let's go to the dialer interface and copy the dialer interface as well as okay so dialer interface uh, number two so the dialer pool okay let's do that let's copy this thing here copy and i'm going to change it right here okay pool uh okay dialer pool two dialer okay the br2 for host name okay cisco and here we go so let's uh, dial it in phase two here we go paste okay uh am i on no 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 shouldn't do that i'm pasting this in the uh the wrong device dialer two no interface okay dialer two okay interface dialer two okay let's do chat right there okay and no interface dialer no interface dialer two right there okay cool so at this point what we're gonna do we can actually configure a static route doing like uh, IP route, okay? 0.0.0.0.0, okay? With all zero subnet mask and send it to dialer number one right there to show, to show IP route. And as you can see here, we have a static route or default route to the ISP and that's how the point to point actually works i want to show you also how you can configure this one and you could actually ping between those branch routers right there so i'm gonna actually create the dialer interface and also let's go to branch 2 what we need to do here config terminal i'm gonna copy the dialer uh, interface here i'm gonna exit and i'm gonna go to the interface gig one slash zero and point to point over ethernet enable then group br2 right there and yes as you can see we have configured the uh, okay the dialer interface and then we need to issue the point to point client okay Client dial pool number, which is number two right there. Do show IP interface brief. Okay, no shutdown under this interface. Do show IP interface brief. Okay, we'll just wait a couple of uh, seconds while we get exactly. So we get an IP address in here. So at this point, we could do just uh, okay, branch router do show run um, include IP route so I can just copy the default route here and paste it okay copy paste and paste it on the other guy I need to modify it so I'm gonna use the dialer, dialer interface number two instead of one I'm gonna copy and paste right here br2 paste and here we go you show IP route do ping okay as you can see uh, okay let's ping 10.16.1.1 in reachable and reachable and okay it's kind of okay so both they have to show IP interface brief brief so both, so uh, 16 to 1, and let's go to this guy, to show the interface brief, the windows is blinking here, okay, do show interface brief right there, 
Okay. Uh, duping, 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 duping. Usual IP routes. So we have default route. Duping one uh, ten dot sixteen dot one dot two right there. Oh, the two dot one. The other side. So we're getting n a reachable message right there. So let's ping duping 10 dot uh, duping 192.0.2 this is branch 1 right dot 9 here you know, this is dot 5 basically like, here we go duping 110.16.2.1 and we're still getting uh, let's go to the ISP do shall I be right there we go, so the ISP actually, uh, here we go, so uh, at least you understand okay, how to configure point to point over Ethernet. I don't want to make this video okay, uh, longer, uh, okay, I'm sorry for the uh, making it you know, so, uh, so big. I don't want to waste uh, much of your time so at this point actually uh, we can ping okay uh, but the problem is we need probably to yeah we are configuring the default route between okay send it to this guy is the ISP can reach to ping um, 10.16.1.1 and of course not it cannot ping it because we need to tell the isp how to reach this remote network right so you could actually point uh, to the uh, to this interface you could do that ip route because here what uh, next video probably i'm going to do i'm going to enable uh, ospf in this uh, branch network here and also i'm going to use Okay, I'm gonna use uh, the headquarter, okay? The headquarter, as you can see right here, to access those branch offices. So here we are gonna use something like uh, BGP in here. This will be the hub router and those will be spokes running OSPF. It's amazing and it's, I mean, uh, mind blowing. Uh, just, um, I hope that will actually uh, create this video for you guys. Okay, so I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.